Hi, Richard. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I was just telling a colleague that I was starting to feel nervous because I'm not used to all the Zoom uh, interviews. And he said, well, it's just chemicals. And I'm like, okay, okay, that's appropriate. <laughs> yes, in a way, everything can be reduced back to that. It's all chemistry. <laughs> Exactly. So for a film about uh, brain and limbo and now all of our lives are in limbo, it's kind of the perfect time for the film to come out. <laughs> Maybe. I like that segue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's start at the very beginning. How did you know that Crystal's book was the right um, work of art for you? How did you know? What about it drew you to it? You know, Crystal's book it was, it was kind of like what you were saying, uh, uh, you know, when we just met on, on, on Zoom was, was that it brings up these memories and these, these feelings of, uh, of high school. And who knows if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it was enticing. And it, it was, it, my, my pull towards it was almost compulsive. Um, uh, I just, I thought that uh, it was, it was, you know, I don't read much, uh, uh, you know, in the young adult genre, that's the label. I, I actually haven't read, you know, unless you count Catcher in the Rye in a separate piece. And I have nothing against, you know, uh, YA uh, books, but I just, I just typically don't read them. And, but it came from Lily, you know, and, and so I, I, I was intrigued and um, reading it, I, I really connected to the despair <laughs> and the darkness and uh, uh, the way that it unflinchingly embraced the pain of being young. Um, I had some good times when I was uh, a teenager, but when I think back to it, I, I still see it through a lens of, of, of pain and loneliness and um, uh, you know, uh, I also felt like, I feel like a lot of times, um, that crossing of the threshold from adolescence into adulthood, um, only comes about through, uh, things like loss and, 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 uh, heartbreak, uh, or more seriously in, in Grace's case, tragedy, mortality. So I, I liked that feeling. And I thought if I could just, you know, bottle up that feeling a little bit, um, it might be a worthy story to tell. That'd be a noble story to tell. And uh, I know you flew to Vancouver to speak to Lily at first about it. What was her vision for the film? Very similar to mine, you know, we 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 bonded over uh, blue is the warmest color and uh, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I showed her some still frames from uh, Vertigo and uh, Lovers on the Bridge, and even you know, as as sort of far out there as uh, Tarkovsky's Stalker, because I, I wanted I wanted her to. Uh, get a sense of of how seriously I was gonna uh, uh, treat the composition and the tone and um, um, how cohesively I wanted to tie in the production design and the wardrobe um, and and have everything you know have everything help to tell uh, this story um, and um, she was she was really into it and uh, you know we were we were kind of in lockstep from that point on and I know um, for Southside with you, your inspiration was kind of the works of Adrian Lin. So what did you draw on aesthetically for this film? Hmm. Adrian Lin was, yeah. Where'd you find that? That, yeah. I, I feel like I didn't talk <laughs> about that. Yeah, that, that, that was a big one. Um, but, uh, but for this, you know, I watched like a, an eclectic array of, of movies with, with my cinematographer. We... There wasn't one influence, but some of the movies that we watched were uh, Gus Van Sant's Elephant. And I, I looked at that for its sort of uncompromising long takes uh, for the way that 
it's unafraid to sit in the mundane and the minutia of high school life. The performances in that movie, they're all um, untrained actors. They're all, uh, you know, regular kids that came in and auditioned. And they are just so open to the camera and so, um, you know, lacking in, 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 in self awareness. It's, it's, it's great. Um, um, Vertigo was, was something that we looked at. I mean, not that I'm remotely comparing this uh, movie to Vertigo, but I did look at the way Hitchcock used, uh, uh, color to help tell the story. So you have Kim Novak and she's assigned green and you have, uh, Jimmy Stewart and he's assigned, Green, uh, he's assigned red as his color. And um, as the story progresses and he becomes more infatuated and she becomes engaged in, in, in his world, uh, their colors start to shift. They start to wear each other's colors. So I, wa I, wanted, I wanted to dive into that a little bit. And we, we, did, we did get into that uh, in, in scenic design and in, and in wardrobe. Um, you can track that through the movie. That was a, that was a fun challenge. Um, yeah, those are the those are some of the influences. Do you have a particular scene that you love to shoot, or you loved in the end product? God, it went it went so quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you, you, you know there there was a there's a montage uh, kind of smack dab in the middle of the movie when it seems like Grace and Henry are. Are, 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 are kind of uh, having a breakthrough and getting closer. Um, mm -hmm. And I had like an afternoon to shoot all the pieces of that, mo or most of the pieces of that montage. Um, and we sort of picked that day to say, Albert, the DP and I just said, fuck it, let, 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 let's, let's throw our shot list out the window and just capture some stuff, you know, let, 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 let's, you know, I'm, we're going to go out into the field and into the classroom and I'm just going to give Lillian Austin some prompts and uh, let's find good light. And uh, my favorite shot in, in, in the movie came about from that type of, of improv. The, we weren't even with the crew. It was me and Albert and with the camera, the two actors and the first AD, we were all like, exhausted from the day coming back uh inside the school from from shooting some of those pieces and we happened to walk into you know it was way after hours at night so the school wasn't populated at all uh, we were the only ones in there but we walked into a dark hallway that was backlit um and uh it was backlit by an adjacent hallway so it was like a t-shape and there was light at the at the uh the top of the t but the hallway itself was completely dark and I, I i thought if we could get them silhouetted interacting here it 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 could be really beautiful and so that's what we did we threw them in and i put the camera on the floor and um and it was uh it was a lot of fun so that feeling that kind of freedom you know i always go in with a plan my first movie I stuck to the plan every day. Um, I mean, there were certain moments where I had to, uh, you know, call an audible uh, because of technical things, but 95% of it was sticking to the plan. This time I said, I'm going to still go in with a plan. I'll always have the plan, but I want to give myself the freedom to um, come up with things on the spot and, and feel out what the actors are doing and, um, and I think I'll probably take that up a notch on the next one too. It's, it's, it's very liberating. Okay. We'll talk a little about collaborating with Lily and Austin and what that was like. Dream, dream come true is like a trite way of, uh, uh, you know, trite soundbite to give, but it really was, I, you know, I consider them friends of mine now, real friends of mine now, not in the Hollywood way. Um, you know, I love both of them. Uh, they are so committed. I, at least they were on this movie. They were so dedicated um, and uh, malleable, you know, open. And, I, and I, I tried to be too. You know, I gave them a lot of latitude and freedom with the, uh, the dialogue. Um, they're much closer to being in high school than I am at this point, 
at 35. Um, so I trusted that uh, the, the way they wanted to say certain things would sound better than what I had scripted. Um, so we rehearsed a lot. We, we would get together. Uh, we were all staying at the same hotel in New Jersey. We'd get together, read through scenes that we were shooting the next day, talk about it, you know, and it was very interesting. So Lillian Austin had uh, worked together on a short film some years ago and they were friends. They liked each other. You know, they had a, they had a chemistry. Mm -hmm. It really makes a big difference when you're, you know, when you're two leads like each other. And, uh, and I, I've had that on two movies now where there's just a genuine and, and, and it's, it's so great. And, and, uh, and they became even closer friends. Uh, they pretty much had just each other, you know, for, 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 for the shoot. I mean, they're, they're, that's not entirely true. They, everybody became friends, but they really deepened their friendship and their bond. And that, that helped, uh, they, it, it was motivating to each other, you know, um, like they wanted to do well for each other, which was great. Um, and, uh, and we had good times, we had good times. I know Crystal was very excited about being on set for the party scene, and she spoke about a fish wrangler. What's a fish wrangler like? I just have to know. You know, <laughs> nothing more surreal than being in an abandoned factory set, a, a, a constructed abandoned factory set in an abandoned warehouse space at three in the morning with a with a, with a fisherman, you know, a guy in a fisherman <laughs> costume stepping into a, a, a fabricated pool of of koi, um, and you know, gently lifting a dead koi, you know, a, a collateral damage of our shoot out of the uh, out of the pool. Um, you know, we it's just it's just bizarre, you know, to 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 be in a situation like that. Um, he was there to make sure that we were treating the fish um, uh, properly, and we and and we did. You know, we got that 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 approval that 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 you need, um, um, and that's it. I mean, that's what he was there for, and he made sure that we were feeding uh, the fish the 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 right kind of food and. Um, and uh, yeah, what else can I say about it? <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious. So was it nerve wracking having her on set because you had adapted her work and she was very full of approval for it obviously, but was that nerve wracking as a writer? No, because uh, Crystal and I, we, we, we only met over email after, uh, um, after I finished the script. She, so she, mm -hmm. I didn't even have the rights when I wrote the script, but luckily she read it and granted me the rights. Excuse me. And um, Crystal made it very clear from the get-go that, that she sees the book and the movie as two separate pieces of art and that they needed to stand on their own. But she also felt that, you know, I was able to capture the spirit of of the book and distill mm -hmm. it down i think were her words to uh to to its essence um and she she really she really entrusted me with with grace and henry um so i was pushing for her to to, to be flown out and to come and stay as long as she wanted but my only um my only uh uh, uh push was or I, the only thing i insisted on was that she definitely be there for the, the, the koi pond scene in the factory because um, I, I can just imagine, you know, when she was writing that in, in, in the book, um, you know, how tasty that is as, as, as a writer to come up with that setting and to, you know, to imagine it. And I, I, wanted, uh, I wanted her to be there to experience that scene because it's, it's just, it's, it's such a, a magical scene in the book. Um, mm -hmm. So that, yeah, it was great having her there. She, I mean, Honestly, other than you know eating dinner with uh, with with her and her her husband a couple of times, um, I don't ever remember her saying a word to me because she was so afraid to step on anyone's toes, and she just kind of sat there squealing, and 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 it was it was great to have her. <laughs> oh. 
So you brought to life two beautiful love stories. Would you say you're a romantic at heart? Oh yeah, I'm totally romantic. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know why I've, I've made two love stories because I'm a romantic, but I'm a lot of other things too. Um, mm -hmm. But that's just the direction it's gone in, and um, th you know, yeah, this is a love story in a way, but in, in Southside with you was 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 really a love story it was the beginning of, of like a of a deep and abiding love i think this movie my interpretation and i welcome all interpretations is that henry's not really in love with with grace he thinks he's in love with grace and he's in love with the idea of her um mm -hmm. but and but and i don't think grace is in love with henry i think she she wants to be she wants to feel something other than the pain um, so I look at it, I look at them as sort of, uh, you know, opposite ends that, 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 that is a love story. Southside's a love story. This is really the other side of the coin. It's, I think it's a, I think it's a story about heartbreak or first heartbreak. Um, um, but yeah, certainly in the same universe there, you know, there's no, there's no question about that. Right. And finally, what have you been seeing lately that you really like? What have I been seeing lately that I really like? Oh, right. um, I, I uh, uh, shamelessly uh, do not keep up with newer stuff. I, 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 I find myself, the older I get, I find myself going back to the things I already love. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been rewatching all of my favorite Star Trek The Next Generation episodes over, mm -hmm. over quarantine. Um, and uh, to anyone out there that has never seen the show it's on Netflix. all the episodes are streaming right now on netflix and a great episode to start with would be uh the inner light i think it's season six or seven season seven um that's a great episode to start with uh so yeah it's just it's a i've just been revisiting that and 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 just how uh emotionally complex that show is and 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 and, and uh, i love all of its uh ethical and and uh, uh moral um assertions you know it's it's it, it's a it's a show about progress and progressiveness and and it's it's been shining a light in my in my life during during the dark time that we're all in right now mm -hmm. Your favorite star trek character Oh God! Just out of curiosity. Uh, yeah, prop. are you a Star Trek fan? Are you Trekkie? I uh, I grew up with uh, TNG. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So it's been a while since I've seen it, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a family tradition. Yeah, sure. I I think I think Data and Picard are my are my two mm -hmm. favorites. Yeah. How about you? For sure. Um, I have a soft spot for Q. I know a small character. Um, no. Data for sure. Um, Troy some days. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, thank you so, so much for your art. I can't yeah. wait to see what you do next. And uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It's a great it. interview. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.